now let us come to this one again we have to find the primary valency so x which is cobalt's oxidation state plus 3 into NH3 plus 3 into chlorine is equal to 0. So, x plus 0 minus 3 is equal to 0 which gives x is equal to plus 3. So, again the primary valency is 3. Let us go forward to coordination number. So, coordination number again you can see the coordination number of cobalt is 6 because there are 6 um, ammonia ligands and there are 6 chlorine ligands. So, coordination number is 6. This means secondary valency is 6. And primary valency was 3. So, this is also similar or actually same not even similar it is the same as the previous complexes. So, put the metal atom in between and draw the 6 solid lines so 3 of the coordinations are satisfied by ammonia and 3 of them are satisfied by chlorine now there is no chlorine atom present outside to satisfy the primary valency so all of the chlorines which are present inside are going to satisfy both the primary as well as the secondary valency so i'll have dashed lines here too So, this is how the representation of Werner's compounds is done. So, now we come to the application of Werner's theory of coordination compounds. So, first application is molar conductance. So, it states higher the charge more will be the molar conductance. Now, let us look at this order. So, why is this order like it is? If we look at this order or if we look at the complexes specifically within this order, the first complex that you see is CO NH3 whole 6 Cl3. Now, because there are 3 chlorines present outside and each chlorine has a negative charge. So, the total charge present outside is minus 3. Right, the total charge present outside is minus 3. So, if the entire complex is neutral, this means that the charge of plus 3 should be present on this complex. Right? So, there is a charge of plus 3 present on this complex, cationic complex and there is a charge of minus 1 present on the anionic ligand. I am not talking about the total charge, I am just talking about the charge on one chlorine ligand. It is minus 1. So, minus 1 into 3 is minus 3. So, that means the total charge outside the coordination pair is minus 3. Because the overall charge has to be 0, so the charge on the cationic complex has to be plus 3. So, that the overall charge becomes 0. Similarly, in this case, the charge will be plus 2. Because there are 2 chlorines present outside, each of them has a charge of minus 1. Right? So, if each of them has a charge of minus 1, that gives a total charge of minus 2 outside your complex, which should give a total charge of plus 2 on your complex. Again, because of the electron neutrality, that is the total charge of the complex as well as the outside ligand should be equal to 0 because there is no charge that you can see on the complex. Here it will be plus 1 and minus 1 and here there is no charge at all. So, you can see that is why the molar conductance of CONH3 whole 6 Cl3 is higher than CONH3 whole 5 Cl and Cl2 outside which is in turn higher than CONH3 whole 4 times than Cl2 Cl outside which is higher than CONH3 whole 3 Cl3 because the charge is decreasing. You can see we are going from plus 3 to plus 2 to plus 1 to 0. So, as the charge is decreasing the molar conductance will also decrease. The second application of Werner's theory is depression in freezing point. So, the depression in freezing point as the number of particles increases, the depression in freezing point increases. That is something we know from our uh, class 12 chapter 2. We have a formula from there if you remember which is delta Tf is equal to I 
into Kf into m. Here i is the number of particles. Kf is the chiroscopic constant or your depression and freezing point constant. and m is the molality. And delta T f is equal to T f naught minus T f. So, the T f naught is the freezing point uh, originally and T f is the new freezing point which gives us T f is equal to T f naught minus delta T f. Now, if you see if I increases that is the number of particles increases the delta T f will increase and if the delta T f increases the new freezing point will decrease because you are subtracting the delta T f from your original freezing point. So, if your delta T f value is high then the T f value will decrease right. So, how is this applicable in Werner's theory? We will see that in our coming questions.